Kyle's been in the garage all morning and it doesn't sound like it's going very good. So I think we should probably go and check on him. What's going on in here? Are you okay? I'm rethinking all my life choices. So yeah, three years and I finally ended up getting a crack in my Old Town Sportsman PDL 120. Um, it happened just under the seat over on this side, right there. And that's JB Weld. <laughs> ended up doing an emergency patch to get me through the rest of the season while we were waiting for the new hull on warranty. So just... So just something for you guys to keep in mind and check. If you look in here, that is a foam block that supports all the weight from the chair. And to my knowledge or my best guess is it's just siliconed in there and this foam block came loose and ended up not supporting my weight anymore. So when you guys are doing your off season checks, make sure you take a look check that foam block, make sure she's in the right place underneath your chair to support the weight. So before we go any further, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Old Town. This was the most seamless and painless warranty claim that I have ever gone through. We're not endorsed in any way by Old Town, but it's another one of the reasons why we're probably gonna be having an Old Town kayak in our family forever. Honestly, it was just a couple emails pictures, showed the crack, new hull was on the way. And once again, can't thank them enough. And thank you to Western Canoe and Kayak in Abbotsford for accepting the hull for me to come and pick up. So obviously this was a kind of a freak accident. I mean, it's no fault to the product. Sometimes shit just happens. We got some half inch starboard on the way. And our thought is we're gonna do it to both kayaks. We're gonna fill this piece in on top here with the half inch starboard. And our thought is let's try and disperse the weight as much as possible so this doesn't happen again. As much as I love that Old Town backs their products and sent us a new haul, this is a giant pain <laughs> to switch everything from this haul over to that one. So we'd like to avoid that if we could spend a 20 bucks or whatever on starboard, hopefully fix that problem. Okay, your guys' time is valuable to us, so we're not gonna show absolutely everything getting switched over to the new hull in one video. I think we're probably gonna break this up into two parts. Um, we'll try and keep this video to around 20-ish minutes, something like that. Let's see how much we can get done. <laughs> One of the sweet things about getting a new hull is you get to keep the, all the old pieces. So now in the trailer, we're gonna have a box full of spare parts just in case we break anything else. What a pain to get off. So she said, ha <laughs> That was a good one. I'm sorry, guys. Very first thing we're gonna do is remove the rudder pin from the factory rudder. We're replacing it with this bolt because we don't use the tension knob up front on the steering handle. We adjust the tension back here, works a lot better. So here is your rudder bolt. All it is is two plastic washers, two metal washers, stainless steel bolt, and a nut. Makes the world a difference. Here's your factory pin. All it is is a split ring and your stainless pin back there. So can I do this with one hand, who knows? Maybe split ring pliers would be easier, but I don't know where mine are. Boom, easy. 
that one comes out of there like so and there you go plastic washer on first followed by your metal washer and your nut tighten that up to your desired tension I don't do wrenches, I just do pliers. Uh, good enough for now, you can fine tune it later. Step one is done. Okay guys, next upgrade we are gonna do is get rid of the plastic factory rudder, replace it with the aluminum rudder replacement from Navarre kayak fishing. Makes a world of difference in heavy current, especially when the current's coming from the rear. As you can see, flexi, not flexi. More control over your kayak. The only tools you're gonna need to do this switch, Phillips head screwdriver, pair of needle nose pliers, and some side cutters. So you're gonna wanna start with your rudder in the down position, and you want your left hand side cable to be the slack one rudder in the down position actually you'll need one more tool flathead screwdriver we got to pop this cap off this old town cap carefully because we don't want to break the tabs off there we go and pull your cord out so that's what the inside of your rudder handle looks like left side is for the left side cable. We want to loosen that. Just enough that you can get that undone. And we'll make sure by pulling on that left cable if that was the right one. Which it is, because it's going in. Okay, step one done. Okay, I lied. One more thing that you're gonna need is some wire, and that's gonna feed through the hull of your boat to your back. Um, you're going to attach it to this paracord here. And what I actually found works is if you pre punch a hole through there, this is just a tiny little screwdriver with a sharp point on it. Make yourself a hole. All right, we did it. Wires through the rope. What I like to do, just fold it back on itself. Give it a twist or two. Good to go. This is just picture hanging wire. I'm sure there's better stuff to use out there, but this is just what I grabbed. Make sure there's no kinks in it or anything that can get snagged up in there. Make sure it's on there good too, because the last thing you want to do is lose this inside the hull of the boat. Giant pain. Okay, so that wire that we had loose, the left hand side, we're going to pull that through the kayak. Pull nice and slowly. That first little bit is the hardest part. There we go. There we go, she's coming now. And there we go, wire's out. Step two. We'll give ourselves some slack here with the wire. And you can remove it from your rope. There, put your wire and your rope up here. Make sure no one yanks that wire through. Give yourself enough slack just in case. And your very next step is gonna to be to remove this screw. This is just a Phillips head screw. And, whoa, that is tight. Guys at the factory must be putting this on with impacts. How tight do you want it? Three dugga duggas. Okay, screws out. Take this apart a little bit. And what you guys wanna do is keep in mind the orientation of the ropes. This is the one that we pulled through and it goes under this little bar here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a bar there under the bar and over top of the rudder, whereas this one goes under the bar and underneath 
the rudder underneath that little plate there. If you have to, grab your phone, take pictures of it. You don't want to forget. Super easy. We can take <clears throat> our rudder, put it in the up position. Like that. <clears throat> and we can pull it out of pull it out of its bracket. So now this rope coming down the right hand side is on top and this one is free. Okay we're on the other side of the kayak now just wanted to show you guys how this comes through. There's a loop here and this rope that we loosened goes up and through the loop. I hope I'm explaining this good. <laughs> So the rope that we loosened off can pull out through here and that's out from underneath the bar. So now this is probably going to be pretty tight in here. This is a brand new hull, but if you guys haven't used your hulls or used them all the season, there's going to be a lot more tension on that. So there we go. So that rope keeps coming through just like that. It goes through the top hole like that. Just like that. Pinch it on the other side because you want to hold that loop right there. That's going to give you guys, get you guys pretty close to the factory orientation of the rudder. Rudder's off. So now, this one notch right here goes down. We're putting this through the bottom like so. And then your loose end goes through the top hole. Just like that. Pull it through. You know what's awesome? When you're right in the middle of doing something kind of important and your GoPro battery dies. Okay, this rope comes through this hole and then you're gonna put it back through your little tag loop there. Just like that. We wanna pull this down tight, pull this through tight Keep pulling until you are snugged up. What you should have is what it looked like exactly before you started ripping it apart. Make sure this is your rope that goes over top of this little puck that's in here. And then we can spread it apart, slide it back in its hole. Just like that. This rope, your free rope, which I'll show you guys. There's a hole down there. This rope feeds through that hole. <clears throat> Push it down. Pull it all the way through out the bottom, just like that. Now that we got that rope through that hole, everything is back where it should be. We're going to put our bolt back in. Phillips head screwdriver, snug it up. Let's not make it as tight as the factory did. It's a bit excessive. Something like that should be good. Now that our bolt's back in, we can leave this rope hanging down here. We're gonna lift the rudder up while pulling this side of the rope, keeping it tight. And we're gonna put it all the way 
to the down position. Just like that. And to take the slack out, we're gonna grab our rudder. We're gonna put that in the down position as well, which you can see is not even close. We're gonna to have to adjust that. So I hope you guys can see now that this rope's tight, it runs underneath here and over top of your left hand side. The rope is in there. See it there? Back to where we started. So now, hopefully you guys can see in there, there's that bar. Here's your tag end of the long rope that we had. That needs to come back up through the bottom and underneath that bar. Mm -hmm. I'm an idiot. Way easier if you come from the back here. Pull it through like that. And there we go. And our next step is to reattach this rope to the wire. We want to go to as close to the end as possible, and we also want to make this as flat as possible. I'm all wrapped up there, but that's okay. You really want this way to be secured when you're pulling back through. So we are going to twist it and twist it and twist it. You want it as smooth as possible. Going back through the other way. Now we're at the back at the rudder handle. Make sure you're in the down position, rudder's in the down position. Then we can start feeding that cable or the wire back through the hull of the kayak. You might have to come back here and check a couple times, make sure it gets started good. Now we're inside the boat. You wanna cross your fingers that it doesn't come off in there. I really hope it doesn't come off in there because then I'll look like an idiot. That's not good. That is not good. Okay guys, I'm an idiot. It ended up pulling through, but I managed to use some other wire, stick it down through there, and then I fed it up from the underside. Luckily it came off right below the hole, so disaster averted. So we're gonna pull this tight. We are pretty much the same length. The handle is down all the way. So we are gonna go ahead and wrap it <coughs> around that screw that we loosened at the beginning all the way and tighten it down. Now in theory, when we lift this up, the rudder should come up, rudder comes up and back down. We're gonna tie a knot in this again, just like they did from the factory to see any adjustments we can make out on the water for our first trip, if, we're, if we don't like how it's sitting. Stuff all that back in there. And where is my cap? Put that back on there when it's in the up position. And that's it. Rudder done. Okay guys, I don't know how we're doing for time here, but that's the magic of editing. Um, since we did the rudder, upgraded it to the aluminum rudder from Navarre Kayak Fishing. Might as well throw the Navarre Kayak Fishing rudder replacement handle on as well. Simple upgrade guys, this is how the boat will come from the factory. Your factory handle will be in the Old Town Tackle Box, but we're gonna switch it out for this one. And the reason we did is because we no longer need that tension knob since all of our adjustments are done at the back of the rudder. Navarre also makes a taller one. We went opted for the shorter ones, but they do make a taller one that's 
double the height, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And we might as well finish up everything to do with the rudder today. So we're gonna add these little rudder adjustment um, knobs from Yak Hobby. And it just makes it a super, super easy time to adjust your tension on your cables. As you can see, there they are, the Yak Hobby rudder cable adjustment nuts. This side here is going to face the back of your rudder. There's a little channel there that slides over top of the cable like so. Over top of the cable like so. And all it is to hold it on there is a zip tie. And tighten them up like that. No problem. Slide that one through the hole for the zip tie. Tighten it up. No problem there. Some side cutters. Cut that like that. Make sure they're tight. Cut that like that. Now this makes it super easy. They slide over top of those turnbuckles. Super easy to adjust the rudder tension. All right, that's a wrap. Aluminum rudder installed. We got the rudder adjustment knobs installed and the rudder handle installed. Hopefully this helps any of you that were looking to upgrade to an aluminum rudder. It is a worthwhile upgrade. I promise you, you won't regret it. Once again, huge shout out to Old Town for hooking us up with a new haul. Much appreciated. Best warranty in the business by far. That's a wrap for part one. Make sure you guys come back for part two. We still got lots more to do to this. Electronics installs, aluminum rail installs, rod holder installs. Lots more good stuff coming your way. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.